Start your weekday mornings with Good Day Wisconsin, 5.30 on Fox 11. More local, more often. First on Fox 11 News at 9. Startling images from Oklahoma. After a barge meets a bridge, cars and trucks plunge into the water. An Outagamie County tradition makes a tasty return a year after the mad cow scare shuts it down. The threat of another deadly animal disease could keep area deer hunters from the woods. We'll tell you just how many may be shunning the hunt. More local. More often. This is Fox 11 News at 9. With Connie Feldman, Michael Chen, Kevin Uselman from Weather Lab HD, and Drew Smith from the Fox 11 Sports Center. This is Fox 11 News at 9. Some startling new numbers reveal a deadly deer disease could have a big impact on the upcoming hunt. Good evening, I'm Michael Chen. And I'm Connie Feldman. Before we go to that story, though, Memorial Day travelers were facing the threat of severe weather this evening. John Chandick is in Weather Lab HD with the latest. John? Well, Connie, not only the threat of severe weather, but in a couple of cases out in the west, there were a couple of thunderstorms that did produce 40 to 50 mile per hour winds right along the Mississippi River. But let's take a look at first track live Doppler radar. Mainly heavy, moderate to heavy rains. Just a little bit of thunder and lightning is what's left with the showers and the thunder showers now. Let's put it into motion for you, and you'll see that there is one batch after another moving almost due east through northeastern Wisconsin, mainly north of Oshkosh and south of Menominee and Marinette. There will be more of these, including more in the O'Connell Falls area. If you've been waiting around for the fireworks, not going to happen. They've been rescheduled tomorrow at 930 due to the heavy rains right now. Connie? Thanks. John, thanks. Well, could a deadly deer disease keep hunters at home this fall? A new poll just released says more than a third of Wisconsin hunters may not hunt because of chronic wasting disease. So far, 18 deer in southwestern Wisconsin have tested positive for chronic wasting disease. The disease attacks the brain, causing the animal to waste away and die. A $4 million state bill was passed in mid-May, granting wildlife officials the power to hunt deer and regulate feeding to help stop the spread of the disease. It's all part of a plan to shoot all deer within a 287 square mile area of Dane, Iowa and Sauk counties. And while officials battle the disease, local hunters are battling their own concerns. According to a survey conducted by St. Norbert College, 36% of Wisconsin hunters surveyed said they are skipping this year's hunt because of CWD. As Fox 11's Pat Rafferty shows us, others say the survey results are surprising, but say they are still planning to hunt this year. The uncertainty surrounding chronic wasting disease has Wisconsin hunters seriously thinking about not taking part in this year's deer hunt. I think there's quite a few out there that got the ifs about it. Each year, Thomas Lepp and his friend Jim Dalton hunt deer in Pembine. Experts say there is no evidence CWD can spread to humans, but they have stopped just short of guaranteeing the safety of venison. Lepp and Dalton say they feel safer hunting in northern Wisconsin because no traces of the disease have been confirmed there. Doesn't really bothering. So far it ain't a problem around here. When it becomes a problem, then it's something to start thinking about. In just four months, hunters will take to the Wisconsin woods. While all of the hunters we spoke with said they still planned on hunting, they did have some concerns. If I hunted near the affected areas, I'd be very cautious about it. Chris Christensen has hunted in Door County for 30 years. Even though he's north of the affected area, he says he will hunt this year, but may not eat the venison. I'd wait till somebody told me it was safe to eat them before I would. Wisconsin Department of Natural Resource officials hope to learn more about the disease and its potential effects before opening day of deer hunting. But for me, I'm still going to hunt. Although hunters like Lep have already decided to hunt, many others may wait for more information on the disease before making a decision. Information that may be available by the time hunters head into the woods this fall. In Green Bay, Pat Rafferty, Fox 11 News. Next month, DNR officials will meet in Racine to discuss concerns from hunters and possible changes hunters may need to make before this year's hunt. Accidents on Wisconsin roadways this Memorial Day weekend have taken the lives of at least six people, including five young people. From Ocanto County, an accident in the village of Surring on State Highway 32 killed one passenger yesterday afternoon. 
In Marinette County, a 21 and 24 year old man were killed in a one car accident this morning in the town of Goodman. In other parts of Wisconsin, accidents claim the lives of three people, all ages 20 and younger. One of those was a 17 year old student who was killed in Polk County Friday, just hours before his graduation ceremony. In the wake of the priest sex abuse scandal, priests across the state are making pleas to parishioners. Priests in the Milwaukee Archdiocese and around the state are asking parishioners to stay committed to the church during today's sermons. A priest at St. Anthony's Church on Milwaukee's south side asked Catholics not to stop giving donations to the church. He says it is a selfish request in light of the serious conflicts facing the church, but they need money to operate. Earlier this week, former Archbishop or Milwaukee Archbishop Rembert Weekland admitted to reaching a secret $450,000 settlement with a man who accused him of abuse. Officials believe there could be up to a dozen fatalities after a 600-foot section of an interstate bridge collapsed early today in Oklahoma. It happened when an empty oil barge slammed into the bridge. Tim Rory has the story. A barge knocked out a 600-foot section of a bridge on Interstate 40 over the Arkansas River early Sunday morning. Witnesses say seven to nine vehicles were sent plummeting 62 feet into the river. It's pretty bad. It's pretty sickening. There's a lot of people in the water. There's debris, baby diapers, car seats up and down this this uh, side of the embankment. It's pretty, it's pretty nasty. Only five people have been pulled out alive from the river, and authorities have given up hope of finding anyone else alive. People at the bridge tell me they have seen people in the cars in the water, um, and those people, unfortunately, have not survived. Authorities are still trying to determine what caused the barge to collide with the bridge and have interviewed the captain who was taken to the hospital. Apparently, he uh, se uh, suffered a seizure or something uh, behind the wheel because uh, the captain was in charge of the barge when the accident occurred. Oklahoma Governor Frank Keating toured the site of the accident and along with about 50 rescue workers said a prayer for the missing. A very sad day for this Memorial Day weekend here in Oklahoma. The governor says that Interstate 40 has been rerouted and the bridge will take at least six months to rebuild. I'm Tim Rury reporting. President Bush is in France today to drum up continued support for the war on terrorism. President Bush met with French President Jacques Chirac and praised France for pursuing terrorists and sharing intelligence with Washington. But the French, like other Europeans, have withheld support for the idea of attacking Iraq to overthrow President Saddam Hussein. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. The two presidents will go to Normandy, the French coastal region where American troops landed on D-Day, June 6, 1944, to liberate Europe from the Nazis. Search teams say they think they have picked up a signal from the black box of a China Airlines plane that crashed into the Taiwan Strait yesterday. Taiwan's transportation minister says recovery teams are confident they'll be able to pick up the device soon. Helicopter pilots say they spotted the plane's cabin door, a wheel, and what appeared to be part of the plane's belly. About 20 minutes after taking off from Taipei, the plane split into four pieces, then plunged into the choppy waters, killing 225 passengers and the crew. Search crews have recovered 83 bodies. Still ahead tonight on Fox 11 News at 9, a long-awaited meal in the valley. The breakfast on the farm tradition returns to Ottagamie County with a little bit of a twist after it was canceled last year. Plus, a campaign to help find missing children is motoring onto the racetrack. All you need is $199 and Dorsch Ford Kia. Drive a new Ford Ranger, a new Ford ZX2, a new Kia Spectra, all with no money down in just $199 a month. No money down in just $199 a month at Dorsch Ford Kia. I was watching how Scott handled the, the budget issue here in Wisconsin, and he's handled it the way you'd want any leader to handle it, to stand up and make tough decisions. He's not afraid to lead. He proposed a budget that recognizes you don't raise taxes on the working people. Well, this guy has got a strong record, a record of leadership, a record of accomplishment. Send this man back for four more years as the governor. Scott McCallum for governor. We're putting health care into some very capable hands. Yours. By making access to health care easier, 
by making information more plentiful so that you can make decisions for your family, so that you can maintain control of your health by giving you online access to a world-class healthcare system. And if that isn't enough, you can always visit the babies. Welcome to bellend.org. Someone believes in you. Get interactive with Time Warner Digital Cable. Score big with all your favorite sports and NASCAR action. Trade with stock quotes from CNN FN. Rock on with 40 commercial free music channels. And HBO knocks out the competition. Go digital now for just $39.95 a month. Receive all 150 channels and get ready for HD. Plus, you get 25 channels of HBO and Max for $8.95 a month. First month free. Call 1-800-CABLE-ME today. The very best in cable just keeps getting better. All you need is $199, a job, and doors Ford Kia. For a great selection of used cars, trucks, SUVs, and vans, all you need is $199, a job, and doors Ford Kia. The best that you can do. Now until Monday at 5, low construction emergency. Guaranteed lowest prices with further markdowns, free delivery, plus no interest and no payments for one year at Furnishings Unlimited. Breakfast is back. Well, with a twist, after many breakfasts on the farm were canceled last year due to the hoof and mouth scare, this year they're back. Outagamie County took the opportunity to try something new. This year we've switched away from the breakfast on the farm to dairy day on the farm uh, where we're serving pizza and uh, deep fried mozzarella sticks and cheese curds. A change in menu didn't seem to keep folks off the farm. They were lined up to get into Dairy Day on the J&M Hofacker farm. Last year we missed attending, so we were real happy to hear that this is happening again. I hope they do every year from now on. The traditional event is annually held to promote and educate the public about agriculture. We get the people from the city, from the towns, out, out to the rural area, out to the farms to to see how the farmers are operating, uh, for the kids to get to see the, the cattle, the, the young calves and the cows, and see how they're milked. Just don't buy the food on the shelf, but there's a lot of work put in to get it there. Although farmers are still taking hoof and mouth precautions. Oh, there's always a concern about it. Uh, most farms uh, uh, still try to keep most people off their farms, because uh, it's, it's still always a concern. But they say the scare is over, and they're glad to welcome the public back to the farm which is good news to these folks. Whenever there's any kind of farm activity, we try to attend it. The kids really love all the animals and, you know, the food. And as long as it's a nice sunny day, it's a fun activity. And we've been hungry all day watching that video. Organizers say about 2,500 people showed up today for Dairy Day on the farm. Mother Nature's serving up some rain and cold this weekend, and that was enough to put a damper on attendance at Celebrate the Pier. About 10,000 people showed up for today's festivities at Voyager Park. The event runs through tomorrow and is expected to bring in about 60,000 people, which is below the average of 75,000. The weather didn't rain out all the fun, which included pottery and, yes, a dunk tank. But not all migrated for the white stuff, the wet stuff. Place to bring the kids, and thank God they have a tent because it's, uh, it's raining right now. Celebrate to Pier runs from 11 until 4 tomorrow. It is Memorial Day weekend, and that means it's time to start getting out those summer decorations. Today, area residents got a little help from some crafters. Craft lovers headed out to the town of Amrose Arts and Crafts Fair. Crafters from the Midwest and beyond were selling handmade wreaths, door and backyard ornaments, and bird feeders. Fairgoers could also get their hands on stuffed animals jewelry and clothing and if you see something you like the arts and crafts fair continues tomorrow from nine to five i'm uh, regressing here i'm thinking but about the the snow it you feels know, like winter but uh, i was up in iron, rain. i was up in iron mountain yesterday and there was a little snow mixed in oh, with the rain up there that. but no that's not <laughs> happening we're looking now. towards summer here and right? definitely a more summer kind of scene right now in fact we're dealing with some showers right now and a little bit of thunder but very very little putting this into motion for the past two hours you'll see one batch after another moving basically from west to east directly over the northern portion of the valley. That will continue through the night tonight. Microcast has got this from midnight tonight. We're just watching one batch go through and then another one moves through during the, well, the wee hours of the morning. However, there is a good side to all of this because a little later on, 
into, well, the mid-morning hours. Most of the rain will be out of here, and I think we'll be out of here at least temporarily for the rest of the day. We'll check the forecast and cover at least 24 to 48 hours worth of time coming up shortly. Your Packerland Ford stores are making this the spring sales event you're never going to forget. 0% APR plus 1,000 cash back. Plus, no payments for three months on a new Ford F-150. Find out why over 900,000 new truck buyers chose Ford. Get 0% APR plus 1,000 cash back. Combine that with no payments for three months, and it's easy to see why Ford's got five of the 10 best-selling vehicles in America. Only through May 31st, and only at your Packerland Ford stores. Now, live from Weather Lab HD, home of high-definition weather forecasting for the year 2002 and beyond, here's Fox 11 Chief Meteorologist John Chandick. Well, we were down in Amro earlier on this afternoon, and, well, you can tell by the leaves blowing around that there was a little bit of wind, but it was a warm wind. Temperatures made it up pretty close to 80 degrees in many locations. That is before these clouds turned a little bit darker and grayer. They're also doing a little raining on us right now as we look at a band of mainly moderate rain that is now falling all the way from well, the northern portion of the Green Bay area all the way back to the west. I'm going to put it into motion for you for the past two hours and you will see separate individual areas moving across almost in a due easterly towards the easterly direction that will give us periods of rain during the night tonight. Now it has cooled things down a little bit over many areas around here. Temperatures are now down into the 50s throughout much of central and northwestern Wisconsin. There is a weak little boundary line that is cutting right across pretty well in line with all of those showers that you see to the south of that line, still in the 60s right now. A little bit warmer. Well, temperatures right in our own area. Again, still showing a couple of 60s down in the southern portion of the Lake Winnebago area. Fond du Lac still at 61 degrees. We're at 58 here in Green Bay. The dew point's way up there because of the rain. 55, that gives us a relative humidity at 90%. A north-northwesterly wind now only at 5 miles per hour. The barometer 29.99 and rising. 74 for the high, 39 the low earlier on this morning. Now, one hundredth of an inch, no way, because we've had some rather moderate to heavy rain since about 8 o'clock here. This is a total up until 5 o'clock. We're going to get somewhere between a half an inch and an inch of rain, by the way things are looking during the night tonight. An area, a narrow band of light rain that is cutting right straight across central Wisconsin is responsible for the periods of rain that we will expect through the night tonight. In association with a very, very slow moving frontal system, I'm calling it stationary right now, but there will be a slow southward drift. Look what happens by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Most of the showers, at least temporarily, will end. However, Futurecast is trying to develop a couple of scattered showers during, well, the afternoon tomorrow. It is a possibility, but the more numerous showers and thunder showers will be to the south of us as this boundary line does tend to settle a little bit towards the south. During the day on Tuesday, I think we're going to have a pretty nice day. Despite the fact that trying to put a couple of showers in, I think it's going to be a nice mix of sunshine and clouds and temperatures will remain on the mild side. Yes, showers, possibly a thunder shower or two during the hours tonight. Temperatures will be holding around 50, hardly any wind to speak with, even with the showers and the thunder showers around. Could be a lingering of the showers tomorrow morning at breakfast time, temperatures in the 50s, and then later on into the afternoon, Look at temperatures getting back up to between 70 and 75. There could be a widely scattered batch of showers and thunder showers, but don't let that mar your day because I think most of your picnics will remain dry during the day. Best part of what's in the forecast, look at those temperatures. I tried, I tried to get an 80 degree reading in there, <laughs> but I just couldn't force the graphics to do that. <laughs> we got close you to got it today. Close. That's right. right. Wow. And 78 later on into the middle part of the week. And you are so confident about tomorrow that you made plans yeah. too, right? <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> There's a tea time that is set. When the weather guy <laughs> has the tea time, I'm going ahead with my Best picnic. Sure. <laughs> All right. God, thanks. You're welcome. Well, coming up next, Fox 11's Drew Smith takes a look at what's to come in tonight's sports wrap. Plus, America's Most Wanted, John Walsh is hoping that NASCAR fans can help bring home some missing children. We'll explain next.
Proud to be the only tire of the Space Shuttle. Because so much is riding on your tires. Pops, the tire professionals. We know tires. You should know Pops. Now until Monday at 5, low construction emergency. Guaranteed lowest prices with further markdowns, free delivery, plus no interest and no payments for one year at Furnishings Unlimited. You ready, Josh? Just about. Okay, I'm ready. Now, just in time for summer, get super sizzle and sandals only from Marathon. Make a great impression with sensational sandals for just 99 cents a pair, plus tax with 8-gallon fill-up. That's right, just 99 cents a pair. So, what do you think? They're working for you. An American company serving America. Marathon. Your Packerland Ford stores are making this the spring sales event you're never going to forget. Fox's TV show America's Most Wanted is teaming up with NASCAR with the hopes to bring home missing children. Andy Domeninani has more. After years of chasing down criminals, America's Most Wanted is now chasing down a win in NASCAR. But real victory for the show's host, John Walsh, will be using this car to find missing children. And we're hoping that millions of NASCAR fans will be able to help us bring home missing children. Every Bush race, the America's Most Wanted car will feature a different missing child. This week, the America's Most Wanted production crew was in Concord at the Motor Sport Park to tape the episode that airs on Saturday. The first missing child to be featured on the NASCAR is a kidnap victim, a little girl named Samantha Caballo. She's a little girl that was taken by her deranged mother. Cops are very afraid that they may be hurting this child. So for America's Most Wanted, the NASCAR race is really a race against time, finding little children before it's too late. We do know that showing pictures of missing kids is the best way we get them back, so we're hoping that NASCAR fans will spot one of these kids. That was Andy Domeninani reporting. You can watch America's Most Wanted Saturday night at 8 o'clock right here on Fox 11. And racing fans probably just stretching their legs right now, working out those cramps <laughs> because they've been probably watching TV. Been sitting all there day. all yeah, day long. Feast of just, action. The need for speed was high today, <laughs> and uh, a lot of people got that satiated. Well, a very quick paced sports wrap on tap tonight. We're going to go back to back with open and closed wheels. We'll take it to the brickyards as this guy got to do a Spider Man impersonation once again as the Indy 500 put another one in the books. Plus, NASCAR had 600 miles to go before they arrested. Matt Kenseth had a chance to add another race to his resume. The Lake Show continued in L.A. Lakers trying to take, Kings rather, trying to take a big lead in their series. Took a big lead in the game. Could they finish the deal? Plus, uh, we've got that exciting finish, and the Muskies are hoping to keep on swimming in the Division III College World Series. Highlights from Fox City Stadium. Uh, all that's coming up in just a couple minutes. Join me, Tom Risto, and Ryan Nolan going to join us as well, a couple of minutes away. That all to come on Sports Wrap. Stay with us. All right, Drew, thank you very much. As we go to break, here is a look at Memorial Day parades in your area. are known for capability and now during to report news cellular phone users can contact the fox 11 newsroom by dialing star tv 11 fox 11 cellular service is provided by cellcom clearly the best area residents got an up close look at some pretty unique livestock today yeah those animals were alpacas <laughs> people were learning about alpacas at the second annual Alpaca Odyssey and Fiber Festival in Two Rivers, Wisconsin. As you can see, alpacas range in color and in size. Throughout the day, people were able to view and to touch the alpacas and watch demonstrations of uses for alpaca hairs. <laughs> 
And our spring odyssey continues, but we might get something we usually don't have, and that's a nice Memorial Day. I think for the most part it will be. Most of the showers that we have right now, we take a quick look on our first track live Doppler radar. You'll see the band of showers that continues its eastward trek across the northern portion of the valley. Now, most of those will be out of here, I'd say by around 7 or 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, leaving a good portion of the day with a nice mix of sunshine and clouds. And temperature's still warm, getting up into the mid-70s. So, you know, compared to what we've had, that's <laughs> yeah. Enjoyable. And we have picked our spots, or we've learned to pick our spots each day. So yes. that's fine. Yes. John, thanks. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Stick around for Sports Wrap. Good night. Fox 11 News, more local, more often. Tom Milburn, more local, more often. Live from the Fox 11 Sports Center, it's Sports Wrap, presented by Salcom. Let Fox 11 Sports put a wrap on your weekend with highlights, interviews, and more. It's Sports Wrap. Ah, start your engines, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sports Wrap. We're going to take you the distance tonight. Going to finish the show in Europe, but before we get there, going to make stops in Indianapolis, make a stop in Charlotte. We've got quick pit crews, though. We'll be all right. I'm Drew Smith. I'm Tom Risto. We're also going to take you to Milwaukee and to Grand Chute for some baseball, but before we get to those places, we've got 1,100 miles to drive, and we've got like five minutes to do it. Yeah, I stand on it. Yeah, huh? get on the gas. All huh? right, well, we'll see if we can get this thing all revved going on up. All right, it used to be one of the biggest sporting events of the year. But with all the squabbling among open wheel racing and the split of CART and IRL, the Indy 500 has lost a little bit of its luster. But word on the street says a reunification could happen within about a year or so. And the Indy 500 has become a race to covet again. We go racing to the Brickyard sent cars Robbie zipping around there. But take a look, Robbie Gordon, who's going to race in both again, races today, NASCAR, and watch this, he's got the hose still stuck in, and so gas squirts everywhere. As a result, got to hose him down to make sure that nothing catches on fire. Later, Thomas Skeeker hitting the wall. That's, uh, that's going to leave a mark. After the caution, Elio Castroneves is the new leader. Couple of laps to go, though. Lauren Radon hits the wall, and as a result, we get the yellow and the white flag at the same time. And Castro Neves comes across to win the race. But Paul Tracy in second place, not happy. He said he got to the place before uh, Castro Neves, but didn't matter. They threw out Tracy's protest and Spidey Man. Where's Toby McGuire when you need him for crying out loud? He wins, drinks the milk, does not get to kiss Kristen Dunst, unfortunately. But. He does get the win, very happy for the whole series. Yes, I'm still sinking, you know, like, oh my goodness. Though, if that yellow lap would be able to uh, definitely help me. But uh, again, it's a situation that everyone, you know, like, oh, would it would be me, would it would be the other guy. That's why motor race is so controversial, you know, and uh, I just can't thank, thank enough for the, the gamble that uh, the Cindric and I took it. And, uh, if you have to take a chance, we have to take a chance in Indy 500. He took the chance and he managed to get it. Paul Tracy's still pretty upset about the whole thing, but Castro Nevis makes it two in a row for him back to back Indy 500's first time that's been done in almost 30, in, in more than 30 years. And uh, Robbie Gordon, by the way, finished in eighth place and he wasn't done yet. Yeah, today must seem like a half day of work for Tony Stewart. In each of the last two years, like Robbie Gordon did today, Stewart had raced 500 miles at the Brickyard, then revved it up for 600 more in Charlotte at NASCAR's longest race, the Coca-Cola 600. Our next stop, the Lowe's Motor Speedway. As we get revved up, rookie Jimmy Johnson on the pole for the third time this year for 400 laps of racing at Lowe's. Robbie Gordon getting out of the helicopter, 500 miles down, 600 to go. Lap 132, Wall Burton, Ward Burton cuts a tire, gets into the wall. Then Matt Kenseth, got the best pit crew in the business. Goes into the pit, seventh, comes out second. Robbie Gordon had to eat some bananas during some pit stops for him just to get some potassium, some minerals. He would finish 16th. Lap 228, pole sitter Jimmy Johnson in first place. Bad pit, went too far, had to stop back up. Some valuable time 
costs Jimmy Johnson, he would finish seventh. Matt Kenseth in second place, trying to catch Mark Martin, who's in the lead, and takes the checkered flag. Mark Martin thanking his teammates for a job well done today in the Coca-Cola 600. I can't win in a slow car. And this Viagra team, they buckle down. They put me in a race car that could win. They gave me the lead for four tires. And everything was perfect. You know, I'm very proud of everybody here on the singular team and uh, everybody over there at the IRL team that uh, did that car today, you know. We thought we were going to have it for them, and uh, we just came up a bit short in both ends. Here's a top five. Mark Martin, his first win in more than two years. Matt Kenseth, almost his second win at, at Charlotte. You remember, he won his first career race in the year 2000 at this race. Ricky Craven, Ricky Rudd, Jeff Gordon round out the top five. So here's an updated look at the standings. Sterling Marlin still on top, but Matt Kenseth closing the door. Only 87 points back. Mark Martin crawling up in there with the win tonight. Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson 191 and 197 points back, respectively. Well, after the Lakers won game one against the Kings in Sacramento, many thought purple and gold doing another roll job on another Western team to head to the finals. Not so fast. Kings came back to win the next two, including one at the Staples Center in L.A. to set up game four today. Kings trying to take a big lead in front of the L.A. faithful Jack Nicholson, Dan Cannon, all the, all the folks. Third quarter, Chris Webber slam with the right hand. Kings were up big in this one, 20 points in the first quarter, but uh, L.A. able to start coming back. Flotta gets the layup. It's only a nine-point game. Fourth quarter, good pass. Shaq to Lindsey Hunter, and then oh, check out Devin George for the layup. Kings now only up seven. All right, seven. seven. Oh, yeah, Rick Adelman said, oh, boy, it's slipping away. Seven seconds left. Lakers down two. Kobe going in. No good. Shaq, the bunny, misses it. Lottie knocks it out, and oh, you've got to be kidding me. Robert Ory. Hits it as the time expires, and good night now. Hits the three. Lakers win it 100 to 99 to tie it up a two. Or he does it again and says, hey, there's nothing lucky about that. I thought he was saying it was basically just a luck shot. That situation, you just have to throw it up. Was it luck or was there more to it? If you go back and look at the shot, you know, a luck shot is one of those guys who just he has no form. If you look at the shot, it was straight form. He shouldn't have tipped it out there. You know, I wouldn't no luck shot. I've been doing that for all my career, so he should he should know. He better read uh, read him paper or something. We've got to regroup. Uh, it's it's a tough loss. Had a chance to really take control of the series. Now we got to go back home. It's a three game series, and two of them are our place. Uh, does Vladi read the paper? Yeah, so does he speak? He doesn't speak great English, but I think he should read a paper. Yeah, so do you think after he leaves the uh, the arena that he's on his way to the newsstand to, uh, <laughs> to Robert? Ori's Looks like side. Robert Ori can yeah, knock down a three. No my problema. All right. All right. We're gonna take some hacks at the horse side when we come back. Brewers go back to their long ball ways. Good news or maybe bad news? Yeah, and there's no signs of Barry Gibb, but the Lakeland baseball team needs to pull something out to be. Staying alive. No, I'll, I promise I'll never ever uh, do that again. Please don't turn the channel. That was Robin Gibb, wasn't it? <laughs> we'll have Division Three World Series highlights when Sports Wrap returns. Please don't turn the channel. I, I apologize. It's Welcome back to Sports Wrap, a BG's free Sports Wrap until last segment. But thank you for staying with us. Here's what the Brewers schedule looks like coming up Monday through Wednesday. The Western Road Swing starts at Los Angeles and then at San Diego Friday through the end of the weekend. All right, well, you know, for the last couple of days, yesterday, the Lakeland College baseball team beat Mother Nature, beat Concordia University at Austin, 3-2, to two, the Division Three World Series down in Grand Chute. And now the Muskies' mission today beat a cranky Christopher Newport bunch who had been beaten by Marietta earlier in the day. Ryan Nolan has been tracking the Muskies all week long, and Ryan's here to talk... Talk some college horse hockey. Lakeland guys. Muskies. Yeah, what a great bunch of guys, first off. You know, a lot, a lot of people thought they'd make it to this point, but uh, today, you're right, they had to face a cranky bunch and, uh, well, didn't fare too well, but uh, so it goes, so it goes. <laughs> Never give up until a fat lady sings, and it's an expression the Lakeland Muskies have lived by most of the season. Today, Lakeland would try to keep their season alive and reel in Christopher Newport University. The Muskies looking to make it two in a row after last night's late night victory. First inning, it doesn't start well. Christopher Fopp gets jammed, but it falls in for the hit. Jeremy Elliott comes around to score one nothing. Captains. Second inning, Muskies pitcher Chris Thousand settles down a little bit, getting the strikeout. 
and helping the fish get out of a jam. Top of six. The captains are not finished as Scotty George hits a high chopper over Tad Russell's head. Matt Turner scores easily 2-0 Newport. Top seven, it doesn't get any better for the Muskies as Ted Tignor finds the hole. Two more runs, score five, zip captains. Ninth inning, the lone bright spot for the Lakeland Muskies. Green Bay native Matt Freelich scorches the double to the wall. John Bittner comes around 10 to 1, but hey, that's all they could muster. 10 to 1, your final. Christopher Newport is advancing. Afterwards, the Muskies reflected on an overall terrific season. It was a great season, great players, and uh, well, I, I mean, just all the things we accomplished this year. Another regular season conference title, the conference tournament, first automatic NCAA bid, first regional title, and first World Series appearance, and school record for wins. I mean, what more can you say? Um, well, obviously, obviously, like everybody else in this tournament, we'd like to end on uh, the champions, but only one team can do it. Uh, that, was, that was the biggest thing I, we wanted to do. We, we wanted to make sure that we, we at least let people know what we do is deserve to be here, and that we were among the elite teams this year. And winning that one game, I think we might have got a little too happy with. Beth, they'll be back. I mean, it does amazing things for the program. Uh, great group of kids. Yeah, great to see them in the, in the D3 World Series. Fantastic. You got Hopefully it. they can get back there again next year. Ryan, we'll thanks see. very much. You bet, guys. All right. So, you know, while the uh, college kids use their stadium, Timber Rattlers have been in Michigan over the weekend. The Rattlers and the Michigan Battle Cats split the first two games of their four-game series in Battle Creek. Today, Dan Floyd drives in the game-winning run with a bunt single in the 11th inning. The Rattlers prevail with a 4-3 victory. They'll play game four of this series tomorrow afternoon in Battle Creek. One o'clock starting time for that game. Well, the Brewers are looking forward to the first week in June. That's when they get to play the Cubs again. One of the only two teams against whom they have a winning record. The other, the Padres, trying today for a sweep of the three-game series. Well, yeah, these guys hoping for it. Got a little sunshine roof open at Miller Park. Top of the first. They've had trouble in the first inning. I mean, it's safe to stay for the Brew crew. Am I right? Ryan Klesko, good night now. 2 nothing Padres. But bottom one, Richie Sexton. Richmond Lockwood Sexton puts the Lockwood to it for the 14th time this year. All right, thank you very much, Top Two run homer, three to two Padres. Top two. It seems like guys like to hit multiple home runs against the Brewers because that's Ryan Klesko going yah yah again. Brewers up five to three. Top three, Dennis Tankersley, the pitcher, hitting a solo home run to lap. Oh boy, yeah, that makes it to seven to three in San Diego. Starting to uh, stretch it a little bit. Ronnie Belliard though gets the double to right. Lenny Harris is going to motor around. He comes in, then bottom seven, Alex Sanchez. Oh boy, gets a lot of that one. Can't play too shallow because if it goes over your head, he's going to keep on running. It's all the way to the third. Mark Loretta comes in, makes it 8 6. Now, bottom nine, two on. Brewers down one. Alex Ochoa. Oh, yeah, he, he, uh, he went around. Brewers lose it. The final in this one is 8 to 7. You know, to me, it's just frustrating. It's, uh, you know, it, we did some things wrong, but once we got back into that game, it, we got to win that game. That's not a very good performance when. You battle back from where we were and and then just leave it out there the way we did. Is you know, those games just aren't acceptable anymore. I mean the guys are will definitely have to be held accountable. All right, here's a look at the updated National League Central standings. Red still in first place by a game over St. Louis. Pittsburgh and Houston tied in fourth place. Chicago, who had a five-game winning streak, snapped today when they lost to Houston. Nine back in Milwaukee, 17-33, 12 games back. The Bayport baseball team entered last week ranked number seven in the latest Wisconsin baseball coaches poll. The Pirates are done for the year now. Seymour beat Bayport 5-4 in regional action on Friday. Bayport ace pitcher Evan Peterson's high school career is over, but he's not done playing. This morning, Peterson made the decision he will play his college ball at UW Oshkosh. Everyone knows where Oshkosh is, and they got a good reputation of getting pro scouts at every game and got guys going up in the pros from that college. So that's where I basically wanted to go. Case in point, Jared Washburn, sure. opening day starter for the Angels, played, uh, he was the winning pitcher in the uh, 1994 National Championship game in which the Titans won the national title. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Great program down there, can't go wrong uh, heading down there, and we wish him obviously the best of luck. Well, you know, the Packers have been playing football in Green Bay since 1919. 
basically a league just getting started compared to some other sports. Yeah. Football is America's most popular game. Lacrosse is one of the fastest growing sports in the land of the free and the home of the brave. We'll tell you about some kids looking for some lacrosse organization when Sports Wrap continues. Well, you know, the game of lacrosse is considered one of the America's oldest sports. The origins date back to the American Indians, uh, Amer or Native Americans, hundreds of years ago. In those hundreds of years, it's never been played as a team sport on the high school level in Wisconsin. That could change in the future, though. Len Felton has the story of some area high schoolers who want to play organized lacrosse. Fall right, fall right. It's an intense sport. That's it. Beat him. What's going to happen is what the defense now? is going to pull over here, <laughs> here and there's going to be a lane open right here and we're going to take advantage of that and shoot. Okay. It's called a cross and for the first time it's being played by local high school students as part of a club sport. And it's something new out here and the kids are real enthusiastic about it and I'm learning as they go so it's, it's a good time. It's a cross between all the traditional sports around here so you're getting a little bit of everything. Ball center, ball center. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's a really great team sport and um, it's very intense, intense activity. Intense as it may be, there is only three high schools in northeast Wisconsin with lacrosse clubs, Menasha, Green Bay, Notre Dame, and Bayport. None of these clubs are sanctioned by the WIA, nor are they varsity sports. That can cause some problems. We have our frustrations, you know, just finding field time, uh, things like that's tough. You know, these guys, um, a lot of them are involved in other sports. So we're working a lot around, you know, the other spring sports schedules and making making sure that these guys, you know, have an opportunity to play without having to sacrifice any of the other sports. Well, it's pretty difficult. Um, the school really didn't do much for me. They couldn't give me any fields. They couldn't give me any funding. So we pretty much bought everything out of pocket. And I don't know, the, the village is being nice enough to let us rent this field from them for nothing, basically. Despite all the obstacles they've had to overcome, the Bayport and Notre Dame clubs have inspired other schools to start teams of their own. Coach Brooker has really helped to spread it throughout schools. Some of the players, you know, talk to their friends at other schools. Southwest is starting a team also. And then uh, Madison and Milwaukee areas also say, uh, they report they have a number of club teams down there. So, you know, I can definitely see it, you know, picking up. To watch it grow so quickly is great. Uh, our problem is getting coaches and refs to keep, make sure the kids keep interest and that there's always someone there for them when they want to play. He's going to cut to the middle. Shoot. Soft, look it in. In Green Bay, Lynn Felton, Fox 11 Sports. Yeah, great to see that coming out. Kids like it because you can hit guys and you've got sticks. So, well, sounds like fun to me. There's no ice. Hey, f fight the good fight, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, and it's warm yeah, outside. Yes, yeah, stick to it. Think yeah. Good things will happen. Yeah, hope so. All right, there are many things you can plan on in late May: Memorial Day, parades, cookouts, and Tiger Woods wins the Memorial in Ohio. Yeah, well, of course. Can Tiger overcome a big lead and make it four in a row? He's won the last three. If you don't turn the channel, we promise we'll tell you how he did. Stay with us. All you need is. We are eight days away from Packers minicamp. Oh, the yeah. next one opens June 3rd at Clark Hinkle Field. They'll practice once a day until Friday the, uh, the 7th. And they have the Friday the 7th, there's a special team function. It's, it's a secret, though. They're, they're not <laughs> going to tell it. They're not even going to tell the players until the 7th. And then they have the weekend off. The Brett Favre celebrity softball game is the 9th. That's Sunday, two weeks from today. And then they'll have practice again. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the 10th through the 12th. Practices are at 11 a.m. Well, Tiger Woods was trying to become the first person to win a tournament four times in a row in 75 years as the, Memorial, the PGA teed it up at the Memorial this weekend. After three rounds, he was even par, 12 back out of the race. So, Tiger Woods, how's he going to go today? Great day today. Six under par today. He taps in on 18. But six under par ain't gonna do it when you started the day at even. Jack Nicholas made the cut in his own tournament, hadn't done that for a while. He comes and puts in for birdie on 18. Jim Furyk, there were actually seven guys within two strokes heading into the back nine. Jim Furyk decided uh, we'll take away all of the suspense. This is for Eagle. Chips out, kerflunk. Oh yeah, is he happy? You better believe it. The first non-Tiger winner since 1998 at the Memorial.
Here's a look at the results. Jim Furyk, a two-stroke winner over David Peoples, John and John Cook. Five other guys came in at 11 under par. Tiger Woods, six under. Some Wisconsin players, Jerry Kelly, only four shots off the pace at 10 under par. Skip Kendall, six back, eight under par. Well, at the beginning of the show, we said we we're going to finish the show in Europe, and we're going to make good enough promise if you stay there. Yeah, highlights from the day's action in NFL Europe are on the way. You're watching Sports Wrap. Stay with us. Your Packerland Ford stores are making this the spring sales event you're never going to forget. 0% APR plus a thousand cash back and no payments for three months on a new Ford Focus. Standard CD player, air conditioning and remote keyless entry. News comes from your community and that's where Fox 11 News will be. Covering the events and issues that matter throughout Northeast Wisconsin. And nobody can promise that. Like we can. Putting the focus on local news. That's what it means when we say Fox 11 News is more local, more often. I was watching how Scott handled the, the budget issue here in Wisconsin. And he's handled it the way you'd want any leader to handle it. To stand up and make tough decisions. He's not afraid to lead. He proposed a budget that recognizes you don't raise taxes on the working people. Well, this guy has got a strong record, a record of leadership, a record of accomplishment. Send this man back for four more years as the governor. Scott McCallum for governor. What do I miss the most? Hmm, hard to say. Could be that great reception. You know, it might be the terrific coverage. Maybe it's the joy of making the right call at the right time. Or the satisfaction you get pulling off a great deal. Or being a part of a great Green Bay tradition. Geez, Ron, you really miss Cellcom, don't you? Cellcom, clearly the best. Silver. Black. Red. No matter what color you ask for, you're still getting green. Now get 3,000 cash back or 1.9 APR for qualified buyers on a new 2002 Chevy Cavalier or S10 pickup in whatever color you choose. That's $3,000 cash back or 1.9% APR. Green means go to your Chevy super dealer for 3,000 cash back or 1.9 APR. Hi, I'm Tara Arnold. Bands, clowns, candy, and floats. We're going to take you to the Celebrate De Beer Parade. Monday morning on Good Day Wisconsin. As promised, uh, as promised, here you go. Rookies arrive on the 23rd, the 24th. The practice begins. The vets then come in on the 25th. Two days start on the 26th. And don't forget, training camp reports every night at training camp this year. Today in the NFL Europe, the Berlin Thunder and the Rhine Fire, and check out the Rhine Fire's Jordan Younger. 81 yards on the kickoff return. Nobody going to catch him. The kicker's not going to get him. The Rhine Fire beat the Thunder today, 24 to 14. Whisper Goodman, by the way, 21 carries, 86 yards as the Claymores beat Amsterdam. Thanks for joining us tonight. For Tom, I'm Drew. Have a good night, everybody.